Defense. I'm your host, Adam Dudley, and today we're going to discuss what is the role of a vulnerability analyst. And our expert on the topic today is, I want to say it the French way, Kate, and I'm not sure if Please that's do. Right. That's the way it's pronounced. Okay, cool. Thank Kate you, Adam Boucher. Sandler. Kate Boucher. Kate is a technical account manager here at Nucleus, and she's also a for- former Vuln manager and analyst and also a hardcore Pelotoner, which I happen to know. So uh, welcome, Kate, to the show. Would you like to introduce yourself briefly for the, the folks watching at home? Well, I joined uh, the illustrious Nuclear Security uh, illustrious. a little over four months ago, <laughs> about four and a half. Um, before that, I started my career actually in cybersecurity at Rapid7 uh, just about 11 years ago. Um, so I worked on their professional services side, and then I transitioned to their support services, um, managing PCI uh, ASV scans as they were an approved scanning vendor. Um, from there, I moved on to uh, a little MSSP called GuidePoint Security, um, uh, and that actually <laughs> spun one. out to another MSP SSP called DeepWatch, uh, yeah. where I grew from managing PCI customers to managing eight um, more of the enterprise uh, vulnerability management programs, including deep watches um, right before I left. Can you give us a quick take, you know, for those, for those of us that aren't familiar, you know, what does a vuln analyst uh, or manager do on a day-to-day basis? The long and short of it, the, the Cliff Notes version is you make sure you're scanning all the things, you're taking all the data and you're, prioritizing that um, Mm -hmm. and making sure that, you know, your security teams, your patching teams are addressing the risk in the most logical um, and risk-based manner as possible. Mm -hmm. So basically your job is to make sure everyone's doing their job. A lot of it is you're the middleman between the data and the Mm -hmm. people actioning on the data. Okay. Um, So it's, it's a daunting task, especially if, it's a new role at an organization because not only are you driving processes, but you're building them at the same time. Would you, you know, share some ideas about, you know, as a phone manager, like what are the things you, some of the challenges you face on a day-to-day basis? Are we scanning everything? Do we have full coverage? Uh, Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to be in that spot where you're popped and you didn't see it coming and you find out that you didn't have coverage on it. So there was no way you could possibly, you know, remediate anything because you didn't even know. So it takes a lot of teamwork, having the right people in the roles, making sure mm-hmm. that you're, you know, in constant communication with your security operations team or your IT teams mm-hmm. um, to make sure that, first of all, you're scanning all the things. Um, and then second right. of all, are we treating those assets as equals mm-hmm. or are we saying, okay, well, of all the things that we're scanning, these 50 assets are our most important. So yeah. if these were to be compromised, then we would be hosed pretty much, sure. you know? Sure. So you want to make sure that you're putting the correct assets in the forefront, not that the other assets don't matter, but, you know, we need to act fast on these, placing SLAs on assets, things in you know, your most mm-hmm. important assets and things like that. Sure. Um, you can't be taking 90 days to patch a critical vulnerability on a critical asset, or you're really just a sitting duck right. at that point. Um, so it's scanning all the things, prioritizing what you need to, and then holding your teams accountable, you know, for mm-hmm. those, those prioritizations, setting mm-hmm. SLAs, making sure that, you know, there is a process in place for zero days. Um, you know, emergency patching. These are things that don't always come up, but I think we'll always remember Christmas 2021 for Log4j. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of teams realized at that point, if they didn't have an emergency patching process in place, then they really needed to get one. You don't want to be waking up your sysadmin on Christmas morning yeah. saying, hey, <laughs> we, we need to do this because we have no process around it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, and while you're building that, it's documenting everything because eventually, as I've learned in the past and I've gone through those processes you're building are going to be part of your, you know, VM program management. They're going to be part of your security, information security mm-hmm. processes. Mm-hmm. Um, they need to be 
well known, agreed upon. <laughs> That's yeah. the biggest thing. If you're working with different teams, if you're working for your AppSec team and your network team, they need to be service levels that everyone agrees upon um, and that they can be held accountable for. In the organizational structure, is it common or uncommon for the Vuln manager to actually have authority over the patching teams, or, or are they kind of in a separate world on their own? And you you more have to have a that collaborative relationship. What's what's that like usually? I think it's more of a collaborative, at least in my experience. Um, so my experience, my two of my experiences are as a vendor, as an MSSP, mm-hmm. and then my secondary experience was part of the security operations team. Uh, mm-hmm. So. You know, you have this this core group of people that are setting up, you know, security protocols, um, security security plans, contingencies, making sure that you know any procurement products are secure and they, we vet them, things like that. And then, in a lot of I guess organizations, you have your IT teams that are actually managing the asset, so they're mm-hmm. actually responsible for patching them. So you're I separated. See typically, um, by teams, but, you know, uh, there has to be that collaborative, collaborative type of relationship where I found it's easier to, uh, get a little bit more with honey, (laughs) you know, um, the, it's just, you know, I, I, we all look good when we have a successful VM program and we know that we're doing the right thing and we're fixing the right things. And the CISO can take a report, you know, to the board and say, Hey, last year we had 1.5 million vulnerabilities. And this year we have Mm 750,000. And that's with an influx is, as we know, an average of what, 25,000 vulnerabilities in growing each year. Um, so not only did you manage to attack your technical debt, you kept in front of everything that was coming in and you brought it down, you know, a significant amount. So, you know, it, the bone management or the bone analyst role can be a tricky one um, mm-hmm. because you basically need a lot of buy-in from other people, from other right. people's management um, you know, from, from your security operations team. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is a very important role at this stage because if you're not getting in front of what's coming in and attacking what's already there, mm-hmm. then you're really just, you're never going to be able to dig out of the hole. How does Nucleus really make a Vuln analyst or a manager's life easier? Honestly, automation, I have found. I mean, I'm a person that has used multiple tools um, in the space that Nucleus is in. Uh, I won't name any names, but, uh, you know, a lot of the other tools don't allow for the automation that we have. Just as the example I told you, I used to go into the tool, copy and paste, pull the CSV, have to manually yeah. create the ticket. <laughs> and, you know, the, the that doesn't time sound spent. <laughs> right. The, the, with with the amount of knowledge that it comes with, with, you know, individuals in this field, there's a lot of better things that they could be doing with their time than copying and pasting sure. and pulling CSV <laughs> reports, you know, below the pay uploading grade, yeah. them every week. <laughs> right. There's a lot more in-depth, you know, <laughs> the research we could be doing, um, mm-hmm. you know, a lot, just time better spent somewhere else. Um, so for me, the big, the big, game changer was the automation that Nucleus provided, um, Mm -hmm. especially on the ticketing side of things. Because if you're, if you're not tracking through this activity through ticketing, how are you really able to measure, you know, how are you holding people accountable, um, Mm -hmm. you know, for, for what you need them to do? Um, I'd be hard pressed to see a successful loan management program that didn't have a ticketing aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're working out of spreadsheets, how do you keep track of, you know, the amount of assets and things like that? So yeah. automation is a huge one um, for for Nucleus. And, you know, honestly, the reporting is the the trending reporting that we offer mm-hmm. um, is always was always a huge hit with C-suite. Um, mm-hmm. You got to keep it high level most of the time uh, right. because some of those executives you get 
30 seconds you to a minute <laughs> in, you know, in a quarterly report um, that the, you know, uh, security operations team is presenting. Mm-hmm. So those high level metrics that we provide to show, you know, year, a year's worth of data, this is how we're progressing or this is how we're not progressing. It can go either way. Um but, you know, just the raw numbers of this is what's discovered. This is what we're remediating. This is our mean time to remediate. This is how long it's taking um, on average for, you know, the criticality of these vulnerabilities. Right. My C-suite love that. Um, and that's hard to replicate, you know, outside of creating, you know, going in and manually creating any of these graphs and charts, you know, with Excel. And I feel as though, and that's been my experience that we have a lot of newcomers into this world um, Mm -hmm. and this role in particular, um, I feel like it's the, the entrance into a lot of cybersecurity Mm -hmm. roles or security operations roles. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, I say, just come in with the confidence of knowing if it's not built, you can build it. Mm -hmm. Um, You have a team over here at Nucleus, you know, people like myself that have been in the role that have built, built programs, um, you know, previously. So lean on, um, you know, the, the knowledge of the individuals in this space um, and, just build that trust with the people that you are depending on to action on the data that you're giving them. Um, it can be difficult sometimes, uh, mm-hmm. but if the trust relationship is there, then I have no doubt that the program would be successful and, you know, you'd be able to grow and show improvement to your manager, your CISO um, and your board. Mm-hmm.